and welcome to the QDR Crusaders, episode 119 for October 21st, 2014. My name is Rainbow Plasma, I'm the organizer and this week's editor of the podcast, and today I'm joined by... I'm FlutterGuy317, and I'm the media manager for the podcast. And I'm Admiral Sprock, I do the questions, and I also feature art. Yay! And today we are missing a Mr. Burnderman Jones. Burnderman Jones. His last name, not actually Jones. He's too good for us and is on a private plane somewhere. <laughs> I mean, wow. sure, he just totally like, like, talked about his, his address. Life. Like, he totally just told him. Yeah, uh, so I don't know. He's doing something. It's uh, it's 111 Burned Way. Burned Way. <laughs> Alaska. In the town yeah. of Burnedton. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. Uh, so yeah, he, he's off, he's off doing something fancy, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Too fancy for us, apparently. Yeah. Um, but I'm back, so yeah. Podcast got better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kind of ended up rambling a bit last week, but uh. Eh, oh yeah, it went well. I didn't. I, I'm confession. I don't watch our show. Yeah. It's not really that big a confession. I've said this before, but <laughs> I definitely, I, I don't watch our show mostly because I live it. Um. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't see last week. So did you guys? Did you guys have fun? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, good stuff all <laughs> yeah. around. We featured it, art. It was good. Was it? Was it a bit? Uh, was it a bit hard to, to kind of get you. off the ground? <laughs> yeah. I always feel like whenever I go back and I watch the episodes where I'm not on it, like the intro is always like so like, <laughs> and the outro is always so. <laughs> like yeah, it, it, it just it's very uncomfortable for you guys. And to be fair, like I, I think that's a totally fair thing, and that's because like you guys haven't been doing it for 119 episodes. So yeah. I mean, when you can, like, mess up the intro even after 119 episodes, like, we have no hope, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's the same thing when, like, you know, before when we had themes, like, and I had to do, like, the art whenever, like, you were away, Ted, or mm. when we had to do, like, questions when you were away, Joel, like, you know, I I would mess up on those, too, because, like, you, you know, you're just not used to, you've heard it a lot, but you're just not used to actually saying it yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Burns Out, I'm in this week. And we're still so, here. Yeah, Joe and I are still here. Yeah, we're still here. We're still here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, did you want to talk about the the hub thing? Yeah, I'll just touch briefly on it. We we lost a uh, a very noble and long standing. Ah, what? <laughs> no. Um, the hub is gone. Uh, like officially this past week, I think. Uh, it is now Discovery Family, which is weird because it's going to be like outdoorsy stuff and then ponies and animated shows. But, well, I mean, like, okay, so, like, Discovery, like, took control of Hub back in, like, the beginning, or sorry, the middle of September. Yeah. And they just weren't going to re... Like, obviously, it takes time to rebrand stuff. They can't yeah. just be like, lol, it's different now. Um, so, obviously, they've they've changed some stuff. It's funny, though, uh, if, you go, if you go to the Discovery Family page for MLP, the title still says Hub Network on it well yeah so, <laughs> so there's there's obviously some transitions there yeah um as someone who didn't get the hub in the first place first place okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. first place because i live in planeta um <laughs> uh, uh yeah it did, i don't care <laughs> not me either <laughs> the url i'm gonna go to is still the same url <laughs> honestly i think uh we might get some better commercials now and uh yeah maybe you know what I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it because you know discovery has some pretty cool stuff like just in general, like whenever I see stuff that Discovery Channel is doing, you know, it, it seems like it's cool. I don't really take the time to watch it, but maybe it'll be cool to see commercials from it as opposed to like just commercials for like six year olds. Yeah, like for Sketchers. Oh, oh, wait, no, it wasn't Sketchers. It was like uh, the shoe things and then. Or that one commercial that plays like the really sad music. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you have to buy your kids clothing off of this or they're gone forever. <laughs> it's like, what, the clothing or the kids? <laughs> both uh, yeah. Mm. yeah so i don't know that's i mean i just I, just for me like because i watch streams like it just it doesn't really no. affect me at all so yeah i'm used to i'm used to have to not having channels so this is just another channel i don't have yeah <laughs> so. yeah like i don't think any of us have the hub as a channel like officially so maybe yeah because yeah, yeah. you watch streams too even though you're in the u.s yeah and Joel lives in Australia, so yeah, yeah. I didn't get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you don't even you don't even stream. It probably wouldn't be like that great quality if you streamed. That plus it's like three in the morning. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> no, it's not three in the morning. It's uh, it's like midnight. Is it? 
Yeah, because yeah. it's ten. It's ten a.m. our time. Okay. So that would be midnight of the next day for you. Mm-hmm. Huh. Time zones, everybody. Yeah, <clears throat> learn them. Uh, speaking of time zones in Australia, do you want to do your thing? You want me to start now? Oh no! Wait. I like you. Not though. your art. I like you to start without me, but <laughs> while we're here, yes. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. No, I'm moving house. Yay! In like I think, in like two or three weeks. So are you gonna be away from the podcast because of it? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Yay! Because we good. move on a Tuesday. So maybe. And yeah. So you should have internet by yeah. Friday. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, and Saturday. hopefully it's gonna be better internet than. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Piece. It should be. We should have like, um, three, hmm, 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 like six times faster internet. Ooh! Wow! Yay! Wow! That's that's pretty good. It, that, that must be like the best in all of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Close, yeah. Because uh, from what I've heard, yours is pretty bad no matter where you go. Yeah. So. Hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, news. we should so be able to hopefully... upgrade to, uh, twenty megs down. Wow, nice. that's that's pretty good. I didn't have that until a couple of weeks ago. So, at the moment, yeah. we're getting four. Ooh, <laughs> well, that's awesome! All right. Uh, so, the final bit of news. If you're done with your moving talk, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah. Uh, the final bit of news, which is like actual official news, not just us like talking about stuff. Um, so please listen. <laughs> if, if you weren't listening, now listen. Um, we are transitioning off of uh, Everfree Network's uh, YouTube page. Um, this ca- comes from uh, ca- kind of two areas. The first area, obviously, for the last, uh, you know, like, oh, I'd say, I guess like three or four months or so, we've been putting our stuff on uh, our own YouTube channel, youtube.com slash QDR Crusaders. We've been putting up our episodes there, uh, as well as, obviously, bonus content, so people could go to that channel and start watching. And we've been promoting it here, and, you know, you guys have gone to see it, and I hope more of you will eventually make that transition over, uh, especially now that, you know, we're, we're heading off that page. So that's the first point, so we want to transition to that. And the second point is that um, recently EFN has kind of scaled down their staff, or not scaled down their staff, but just, you know, stopped um having their staff do so much for us which is which is good for them because you know those guys did so much for us um and uh you know they they were really crazy good so now they can focus on the other stuff that they're doing as opposed to take care of us because you know we're big boys we can take care of ourselves um and so you know we we basically do like the live stream uploads and the and the youtube uploads by ourselves as opposed to handing it off to someone else who does them for us um which is what we had in the past so uh, because of that, we decided it was a good time to just plain not do the EFN YouTube uploads um, because we want to transition to our YouTube page. Uh, the live stream will still go on as usual, of course, so, you know, don't worry about that. But uh, as of November, we will be moving our YouTube uh, stuff all to uh, QDR Crusaders on YouTube. So if you are currently listening to this podcast right now and you are sitting on Everfree Network's YouTube page, I suggest you go, pause the podcast, go and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash QDR Crusaders, because that's where this podcast is going to be in two weeks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we're going to have this episode and then we're going to have next week's episode on EFN, but then that's it for EFN's channel. So just thought I'd let you guys know in advance so that you guys can go and you aren't like super surprised when you come back to the page and there is nothing there two weeks from now. Yeah. yeah. They're uh I guess they're transitioning most shows off of it, right? Or something like that. Or off of their YouTube page? No. Yeah. No. Okay. No, they're just they're just transitioning they're just transitioning the staff so that, you know, the shows are doing most of the work for right. their shows. But it doesn't make sense for us to upload in two places anyway. So. Well, exactly. Like, if we're going to do the work anyways, like, this, the, it just, again, like, the, the two things kind of aligned, and, and it made sense to us to move fully to our YouTube page uh, mm-hmm. for all of all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So go subscribe. Yep. Yay. Go check that out. Yeah. And uh, we will transition there fully in two weeks. Speaking of transitions. Hey. 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 <laughs> it's art time. Uh, yeah, we are an art podcast, so we're going to go ahead. We've been doing this thing for the past few weeks. If you haven't been with us, uh, where we all kind of choose a piece of art that we really like and we feature it. So we're going to start thanks to random.org with Mr. Atmos Park. Yeah, that's me. Okay. So the piece I've chosen this week is called beautiful and terrible as the dawn by Nad Nurb B. No, Nad Nurb D. <laughs> 
<laughs> is which is Brendan name. Beckles. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, it's it's D Brendan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, it's that's weird. It's the Brendan. Yeah, or <laughs> maybe Brendan D, but yeah. That's... So I mean, obviously, mm. obviously, just off the bat, we have not featured this artist before, right? No, because I've never <laughs> seen this name before, so that's a good start. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, tell us a little bit about what draws you to this piece of art. Uh, the brightness. I mean, just look at it. It's everything is golden. It's bright. It's you can't see Celestia's horn. It's all just like straight right there in your face, bright. The detail in her head, like the the face, like we we are drawn to to look at, is all really detailed. Whereas everything else around that isn't as much. So that also gives you that sort of wow, what is going on here? And then you look at it, and it's like, wow, <laughs> there is actually a whole bunch of stuff to this, and it's fantastic. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think you know, mentioning brightness is one thing, but I think we should take that for a second, and we should break it off into two pieces here, because I see two different kinds of brightness in this piece. I see uh, something that is directly related to the brightness uh, value in the piece, which is the uh, you know the sheer bright lights of, of Celestia's horn, and in the top right-hand corner, what I'm assuming to be the sun. Uh, you've obviously got those very bright spots on like the tip of her wing, and all of that contributes to a certain aspect of brightness. But there's also a sense of brightness throughout the rest of the piece, where it's not quite as glowing bright, um, but there's almost like a warmth and and that in and of itself um, conveys a certain amount of brightness. And a lot of that comes through because of the colors. Mm. You know, you were mentioning that it was it was warm colors and, and the oranges and, and the context kind of all bring out kind of this secondary sense of brightness, you know, this, this sense of day, you know, which, which invokes a feeling of brightness. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, there's a lot of really nice ambient light um, to kind of go off of your point there. Uh, so like the background in Celestia in general is, is well lit. And then on top of that, you have these kind of specular highlights like uh, in her wings and in her hair and the shinies on her boots. Uh, mm-hmm. And those kind of all contribute to that. Like the, um, y- there are a lot of shadows in the piece too, but like the brighter parts I feel stand out more and the shadows are just there to kind of complement that. Right. The shadows still feel warm because the, mm-hmm. the, yeah. the whole thing is warm. Yeah, yeah, which is which is really interesting, and, and uh, I you know I wouldn't call it like perfectly realistic, obviously, but you know like it 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 does definitely give the piece a feeling to it, you know, and uh, something that I found kind of interesting while we're talking about the feeling of the piece is that there seems to be a general tone about the piece, but something that skews, something that shifts that tone just a little bit is, is Celestia's eyes and her facial expression, hmm. because I think the general uh, aspect of this piece is some sort of, it's it's got grace to it, it's got poise, it's got warmth to it, and then that face is almost like, it's almost like it, it turns it a little bit into into like a harshness, like like it's too bright, you know, like like it's, you know, there's, there's a little bit of, her expression just kind of doesn't <laughs> mesh with what you initially think of the mood of the piece would be. And well, it creates this interesting juxtaposition. This piece is actually very brilliantly done for that because I'm assuming that Beautiful and Terrible as the Dawn is a reference to Lord of the Rings with Galadriel. Um, and in that one scene in Lord of the Rings where she says that she's beautiful and terrible as the Dawn, it's very much like this piece in that she's very graceful, but she's also got this kind of menacing, angry look to her. So, it's, right. yeah, juxtaposition and like, ah, so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy it. I mean, like part of its bias, my favorite color is orange. So whenever <laughs> I see pieces that feature prominently orange, I, I really enjoy it. Mm. Uh, so that's, I guess it's kind of biased to me. Yeah. Uh, Joel, you mentioned the whole uh like detail around the face area and i think this piece does a really really good job of that um because like if you look at her tail for instance her tail is very undetailed it's just like kind of lines uh her tail versus her mane like her mane is very stranded you could definitely tell that uh there's a bit more detail in the stranding uh but if you go to like her tail where you're not supposed to be focused on or where your, your eyes kind of fill in the details it's you know not as detailed obviously Mm. Yeah. The, yeah, the way that uh, Nadnerb has done that is quite inter- quite interesting because when you're looking at her face, which is where all the details are, you can see, like you said, you can see the like your eye, I guess, fills in the detail of the tail. But when you look, and it, it looks, you know, um, stranded and all of that. But when you look at it, 
it's just splotches of bright color with mm-hmm. one or two per color streaks of dark. And that really does give you that sense of stranded when you don't look at it. Even, I guess, kind of when you look at it, but not as much. Mm-hmm. And I think the way, the way that he's done that is very, very cool. Yeah. And he's placed the, uh, the, those stranding lines in such a way that it gives the tail kind of a volume. There's kind of a 3D sense to it because of, well, the stranding marks and the, there's a bit of shadowing and stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with the uh, sense of 3D in this piece, yeah. the sense of, I guess, depth and, and uh, shape in this piece. Um, the, the, most, the absolute most impressive thing to me in this entire piece is something that probably won't go noticed by a lot of people, but it is the body. In between her little hoof things and her, <laughs> I guess, neck. It's not really a necklace. I don't know what you'd call that. Um but in between her pieces of jewelry, you've got just her body, you know? But the shading on that, hmm. you know, the, 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 just the quality of that shading is just spectacular. Mm-hmm. It really is. And it, and it gives, like, this perfect sense of 3D. And even when you zoom in on it, it looks so real, you know? Like, like out of everything else in the piece that, you know, has uh, details that aren't quite all there and has a cartoony feel or has, you know, like the tail, like it's got some sort of aspect of artificial volume and and, and things like that. Mm. The body itself, that kind of middle bit right there, has got so much detail and, and care gone, that's gone into the shading that if you just take take that out by itself, man, is that well done. Yeah, I agree. Something else that I really like about this piece that's well done is the volumetric lighting. Uh, so that is basically lighting that's kind of in a space. So all of the the beams of sunlight and the beams coming off of her horn, uh, because it looks realistic. It's uh, you know it's a dusty air or coming through the clouds or whatever, and you you see these rays of light in there. And uh, I don't know. I just I really like when pieces do that. They kind of add this volumetric lighting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, re- I really enjoy this piece. Um, it's It's got a style that I really like. Uh, the hair is a bit strange to me, um, <laughs> but I find it very impressive that it doesn't manage to stick out like a sore thumb, even well, though it's quite different. You don't like her, like, 50s era hairdo stylings? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that updo? Yeah. No. No, I'm not a huge fan of the updo. Dude, it's like uh, 50s era Celestia would totally have her hair like that. and Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's the nanny. Yeah. 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 <sighs> yeah. I, I, I like it. So is, is that everything that you wanted to, to say, Joel? Um, I think the, the fact that he's got the sun in the background there being overpowered by Celestia's horn, I thought that was pretty cool. Mm. Mm, yeah, yeah, because her horn is brighter than the sun. Mm. Depending on your perspective, I suppose. Yeah. I have uh, a couple more points, too. Okay. okay. Um, I like the framing in the piece. Um, it's a little uh, more subtle than we kind of were used to seeing with pieces that kind of explicitly frame. But in this mm-hmm. piece, you've got like this really close, out of focus cloud on the lower right side. And then you, it kind of follows this other cloud that's in the foreground on the bottom left side. Uh, there's a, a cloud like way in the background in the top left, and then obviously you got the sun, and uh, it kind of gives this circular frame to the whole piece because it kind of follows around that. Basically, makes Celestia front and center. Yeah, and I mean it also kind of um, encompasses or or at least imitates the the kind of shape of the sun as well. You know, it's almost like there's a hole in the cloud that's being, uh, you know, like like beamed through the clouds. You know. Mm-hmm. Follows the follows the rays of the sun at least. Yeah, uh, I also like how they did um, depth with the clouds, and I'm not sure if it's due to shifts in value or if it's shifts in color hue or or something. I'm guessing it's shifts in value, but I think like the layers of clouds themselves have two different values. They have like the highlights and then they have the shadows, uh, but the highlights are always placed like. Uh, adjacent to the shadows of the clouds behind it and it's a little bit less saturated as you kind of progress towards the background 
So it well, kind of it's it's one of the more subtle uses of atmospheric perspective. Yeah, that's true. Or or in this case, it's you know atmospheric perspective. Almost like you did. Mm-hmm. I hate you. <laughs> Why did they come back again? I don't know. <laughs> also, the phoenix wings. The phoenix wings are kind of cool. Mm. They look like well, they look like phoenix wings. <laughs> what do you mean by phoenix wings? Mm-hmm. Like they've got the or well, her wings. They look like they could belong on a phoenix. They've got their fiery sort of color, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. as the so the layers get closer to you, they get darker. So like closer, to, like the 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 wing bone going out. It sort of looks like a flame, kind of. Hmm. Right, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's interesting. I, I wouldn't associate that with, with phoenixes. Um, but, but yeah, I, I really enjoy her wings. Mm-hmm. I like the I like the coloring of it. I like that, hmm. that light at the edges and dark as it goes in. Actually, now that you mentioned the wings, I, I like the anatomy of them. Because yeah. uh, if you look at a bird, like... The bird wings. It's, it's, yeah, it's very similar to bird, <laughs> bird wings, basically. And, like, you see, especially, like show accurate wings aren't really the most anatomically correct i guess <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and they're big blobs and, uh, of plasticine that make you fly yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah um and I, I guess people who, who do that or kind of based on the show don't really have the whole wing structure down but this this artist has kind of captured that in this piece question nice. mm-hmm. can you name more than one thing that has wings that is not a bird that's said bird wings penguin that's <laughs> penguins, penguins don't have wings. <laughs> penguins have wings. Also, yes, a they bird. do. <laughs> but bats have wings. And okay, I said name more than one. That's uh, the one I thought of. Flying fish. Wings. Flying fish have wings. Flying fish have wings. Flying fish don't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. But insects have wings. That's a good. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. I just wanted to make sure because you said bird wings, and I was like, well, what else has wings? <laughs> Airplanes have wings. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right, so Dragons. I mean that was that's that's everything that you guys have to say about this piece, right? Yeah, yeah, I love cool. this piece. It's fantastic. Go check out this artist and check out this piece. It's... Yeah, it's it's really cool uh, to be able to feature uh, a new artist. Uh, hmm. So check out uh, Nad Nerbd <laughs> on DeviantArt. All right, so uh, the next one is my one that I brought in, and uh, in the spirit of it not quite being Halloween yet. Uh, I have one that's kind of creepy, um, kind of dark, and it's called uh, Unworthy Alicorn by Underpable, the guy who I keep mentioning but never bring up on the show. So there we go. Yay. Uh, this was something that uh, he made recently at the beginning of October. It was a commission for someone, um, but I thought that it was definitely good enough to, to come on the show because it was a little bit more deep than I think some of the stuff that Underpable has done in the past, and it's got some... Um, I feel like this kind of characterizes undervable stuff. You know, when you look at it first, it's it's easy to consume and easy to look at it and say like, oh, it's it's it. This art piece is X. You know, it it is one thing. But then as you explore it more and more, you find out that there's a lot of subtle things that he does that you wouldn't have noticed at first that are actually really really cool. Hmm. So I have some stuff to talk about, but I wanted to open it up to you guys first to see what your impressions were. I like how the background is completely desaturated, and the this OC's uh, kind of mane and tail and magic is also very desaturated, but the characters themselves are in full saturation, full color. Right, like they're the only two things in the entire piece that have like any color within them. Yeah. It's uh it's an interesting kind of juxtaposition of the characters versus the background. Uh and it kind of places your focus right on them, uh, just because they they are the only things that are in full color. So your eyes kind of drawn right to them. Yeah, it definitely makes them stand out. I did you on the topic of color, did you notice uh anything in particular about one of the characters to do with color? The fact that Twilight doesn't have the two stripes in her mane? Correct. Hey. <laughs> and her cutie mark is also quite faded. Mm. And uh, these are kind of little subtle things. Obviously, okay, so if we look at the interaction between the two characters, this this evil-looking alicorn whatever bat thing um, has got this swirling magic that it's seems a, to be almost taking away Twilight's wings. It's a batter corn. 
<laughs> Batter court. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a it's a big, lovely uh, box of battered corn, <laughs> deep fried too. You really are American, Dad. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go make myself some <laughs> battered some corn. corn. <laughs> um, yeah, and and so the battered corn. I can't say it. That's, that's too weird. <laughs> um, it, it obviously, it's like stealing her wings, and and it's 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 kind of creepy, but it's also kind of stealing the color out of her, you know. Hmm. In a similar way, I guess, to what Discord did in his episode. Um, but you know, I feel like the combination of the background being lacking in color, mixed with her faded cutie mark, the lack of colors in her hair. And also this kind of sense that this character is sucking something from her, hmm. you know, it it kind of all comes together and it, and it kind of, again, contributes to that kind of draining feeling. You know, you've got the very obvious draining of her wings, but I think it's also draining her of color and draining her of whatever you want to call it, soul or whatever the heck Discord did. Life force. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I, I really like when artists kind of mess with colors and I know we bring this up quite a lot, but, uh, Atmos Spark, you did a vector of a piece by Inohoshi where, uh, it was Rainbow Dash's colors were kind of melting off of her. And, uh, in this piece, mm -hmm. uh, you see the kind of use of colors or the, the lack, the use of lack of colors, I guess, as kind of a more symbolic nature than just not being there. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I do very much like when people play with that, when people play with uh, the use of, like, uh, not color, but, like, lack of color. Hmm. Right, right. Well, and we see it a lot of the times, uh, you know, either color being added to a character or color being pulled out of a character, the most often with Rainbow Dash, because she's got so many colors that people often like to play with the colors of her. Hmm. Um, but I think people uh, forget often how colorful the other characters are, too. And and a character like Twilight actually has, you know, you look at her and you go, ah, oh, she's purple. <laughs> purple, of course, right? But, like, no, it's, it's you know, she's got many different shades of purple and they all kind of mix and come together and she's got whites and she's got dark dark colors and light colors and and there's a lot of interesting color stuff going on with twilight that isn't just the whole monochromatic her her purple you know <laughs> yeah and and so it's it's interesting to see someone explore this kind of color draining aspect that isn't rainbow dash hmm. to be fair though twilight's colors are probably the most analogous out of all the main six Excuse me, we've got a character <laughs> named Pinkie Pie. <laughs> okay. In the name. Okay. Besides Pinkie you know, <laughs> No, yeah, you're you're right. Um yeah. <laughs> but you know what's you know what's funny? Pinkie Pie has uh blue eyes. Yeah. Which kind I guess unless you consider pink and purple to be vastly different, kind of makes it so she has more different colors than, <laughs> than <laughs> Yeah. And but, it uh, it was during the Paper Ponies episode that I kinda noticed that because they, they have their new series that they're putting out and it's like uh where the background matches the eyes and yeah. twilight's background matched her entire self very yeah. closely <laughs> yeah there's 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 a lot of that mm -hmm. um so so the, a couple other things i want to talk about I, I enjoyed the uh aspect of of lack of detail in the foreground the very very foreground where mm -hmm. we have these pure black like just just strokes you know just just off the right and and left bottom corners uh, you know this this sense of like this absolute black. You know, like like on the on the color spectrum, whatever the heck you want to call it, it would be what is it zero zero zero, mm. and uh, also just very like not sloppy but very uh, like obvious strokes of like a digital uh, brush or something like that. Very very obviously rounded and and things like that. But it it it's the sense of like you know creeping and it's a sense of of you know disorder and, and and it's kind of creeping up from the bottom of this piece in a similar way to those like those like thorny tendril things um they're they're creeping up from from below and and and, and going towards twilight and it and it gives this sense of menace i find hmm. i wouldn't be me unless i pointed out uh the way that this image is tilted mm -hmm. it, right, it, it, right. it gives you that feeling of uh i guess unease 
you wouldn't really mm. if if it was flat and level it wouldn't look as menacing and as grimacing as this does because what you've got here you've got the um the batacorn on the left who is i mean if it was flat and level that'd be on the same plane but it, because it's tilted like this he is higher than twilight is and it gives you that sense that he is the one that's in power here he's got more power than she does mm -hmm. right Right, and and it also it's not just a tilt, right? It's got a bit of that curve mm, going. There's a bit of a fisheye going as well. well. Yeah, well, yeah, reverse yeah. And and I like I like the way that it's tilted as well too, because you know not only do you have the character on the left kind of looking down at Twilight, and so again talking about that sense of power, but also you know we were talking about that sense of creeping from the bottom. Well, the way that it's tilted almost makes it seem like she's going to be leaning back. She's going to be falling into mm -hmm. this stuff, which is, you know, going to give you that sense of, no, don't do that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, that, that definitely does contribute. And, and the interesting thing is there's, again, the juxtaposition of the background and the mm -hmm. foreground where the background, you can see it tilt a little bit on the, on the middle and the left-hand side. But you've got like this str much straighter background, and then this tilted foreground, almost like the land is uneven and and it's weird and it's undulating. You know, it also helps with that sort of uneasy feeling. And you are absolutely yeah. correct. If this was on a level, like if it was flat and level, if the camera was on the ground looking at these two flat, you wouldn't get that sense of twilight falling backwards or yeah, the the box of battered corn sort of looking down at her. <laughs> she, he'd be looking up or like level into her eyes. Yeah. Let me tell you, whoever cooked that box of batter porn <laughs> used the most evil microwave. Do I cut that? Like, no. Yes. Yes, you do. Do I cut that? Yeah, you do. Or you bleep is, it. Is, is the word porn not PG? It's... I'm leaving it in. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> battered oh, corn. Yes. All right. Whoever, whoever left in the box of battered corn. Obviously cooked it for too long. That joke's not funny anymore. <laughs> because I slipped up and said something else. <laughs> well, <you laughs> anyways. <know>. Um, <laughs> okay, so... Um, yeah, I, I like the piece. It, it, I think everything contributes to that sense of unease. And, and like I said at the very beginning, um, people would look at it and go, Oh yeah, it, it's, 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 you know, it's creepy, it makes you feel uncomfortable blah done you know unsaturated blah done you mm -hmm. know and that's way too simple there's so many things that contribute towards that and uh you know some of the stuff that we've talked about here and there's there's even more aspects of the piece that we probably can't get into but i think i think this describes underpable's work you know really well because it's something that looks simple it's easy to digest but when you really take the time to to actually take it apart it, it's got a lot of working parts in there and it's got a lot of thought put into it uh i have one more thing i guess before we move on um the we talked about in the last piece the whole shifts in value for defining what's foreground and what's background and this piece does that so well because the foreground is very very dark very low value and because the entire background of the piece and foreground of the piece is desaturated Underpable kind of has to rely on shifts of value to kind of give you this sense of depth and you can see that in the ground where you have this gradient that's fading from very dark in the foreground to almost like a very, very light shade in the background. And then the entire uh, background, all these buildings and stuff like that is a very high value uh, and, and again, desaturated. So, mm -hmm. yes. Very nice piece. All right. Lovely. So, <laughs> uh, last but not least is yours. All right, so my piece is called No Risk, No Fun by Ukulilia. Yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Close enough. Uh, and this piece is of Celestia um, being kind of a bad flank. <laughs> well, okay. So we have to talk about this piece because this piece, I, I think this piece has put this artist on the map if mm -hmm. she hasn't already been on the map because it circulated around a lot of different places and got a lot of people's attention. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we were included in that as well. Um, and it's great to see because I'd never seen this artist before, but she does an amazing job with not just this piece, but all of the stuff previous too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we see artists um, 
and, and we catch a good piece of their work, sometimes that's like the first like really good piece that they did. Like like that's that's the step they took to get to the next level, you know? Hmm. And so that's really cool and I'm glad that they do that. But sometimes I'll go to their gallery and like that was the first piece that took it to the next level. So it's like, oh, none of the other pieces are quite at that level yet, you know? <laughs> So it's hard to look around their gallery and find other things that we might want to feature, you know? Yeah. Um, but this artist was one that I found her. I found out about her because of this No Risk, No Fun piece. Yeah. And then went back through her gallery and it was just like, wow, look at all these, you know? Uh, how did I miss this before? This is one of those pieces where it really stands out even in thumbnail form just because of the colors that are used. You get yeah. these like bright reds in the rose tattoos on her arm and, and her on her, and it, her dress yeah and then uh i just i love how she did the eyes in this piece because yeah. they're so iridescent yeah yeah i mean like you you really can't talk about this piece without talking about the the same aspects i was talking about in our first piece and one of the reasons why i brought it up in the first piece when i was talking about you know like the shading of the body in that first celestia piece was that that sense of that sense of just reality. It's not mm. just the sense of depth in 3D, but the sense of like actual, you know, the 3D that we see every day, that kind of that kind of realism, I guess. Um, that that is something that is so incredibly present in this piece. And it comes down to these careful details when it like things in shading and facial expression and mm -hmm. and just facial structure in general and, and you know, people have mentioned it tons and tons of times to her and, and when they're talking about this piece, but this looks like a photoshopped piece. It looks <laughs> like somebody took a person and manipulated things to be different, but that's not the case at all. It's actually quite completely different. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, and I just wanted to point this out too before we like let this slide by. This is traditional <laughs> i was just gonna mention that yes <laughs> completely traditional and it's really interesting because she uses a variety of tools mm -hmm. um, There's a lot yeah. to draw this yeah so tools used are fine liners colored pencils 8b pencil felt pens for children copic markers and pro markers uh so if you can spot which parts of this piece are associated with what tool then uh you guys get a golden star because yeah. it's like it's so seamlessly blended and i mean this piece was originally made because it was a first try with these markers you know mm -hmm. it, it it really it really is you know like most of the people that we feature on the show that in fact all of them have have really great technique and and at the very least they're learning to be an incredible artist and this artist is really there Mm. You know, she has that talent because you can just tell, you know, she's put in the time to be able to learn this stuff and and learn new things on the fly, too. I think that's really important mm -hmm. when you're an artist to not just be good at your one little thing, but to be able to pick up something else and make that look good, too. I think that's a huge differentiation between a good artist and a great artist is that ability to do something completely different and for it to still be appealing and good as good as what you did before. Mm. I just wanted to point out the uh, subsurface scattering used in her ear. And the wing. It's amazing. And the wing, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> like, like the concept of subsurface scattering in art is incredible. But then subsurface scattering in, in traditional art? Mm. Like, what? That's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. There's, that's there's, crazy. No, there's no layering in traditional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't just yeah. turn off a layer. Mm -hmm. The yeah. hair is great, too. Mm -hmm. um it really it really has that um perfect balance of looking like there's individual strands without it being too strandy you know like without mm -hmm. having seeing every single one like some artists try to do and, and making it like this huge crazy deal that there's hair you know it's still just a part of the piece but when you look at it it it, it looks like it's a bunch of hair put together mm -hmm. I love how, uh, speaking of the hair, she uses uh, kind of the different colors to give the hair depth. So, like, if you look right behind Celestia's face, like, the swoop that goes behind her is completely blue. It's all that, that shade of blue. Whereas the kind of the swoop that goes over her, her head is that lighter green. Um, gives it a nice contrast. And then I also love how there's these highlights, but it's not just highlights. There's, like, strands of hair that are just pure white. 
which uh, really gives Celestia kind of a shine, like this like angelic glow almost. Yeah, but it's, it's, an, it, it's another realistic feature to the piece. Yeah. You know, the, the hair that's that's kind of splayed off the top. Have you ever looked at a person <laughs> who has long hair? <laughs> Have I looked at a person? Yes. <laughs> Have, you ever looked at a person? Have you ever looked at a person who has long hair and seen that not a single hair is out of place? No. No. You haven't. <laughs> it's much more like this. In fact, this is this is this would be pretty good well done hair if it was if it was in real life mm, but you know you have these perfect. strands off to the side <laughs> you have and and when light hits those thinner areas it kind of completely reduces the color because all you can see is the light kind of bending around the the strands of hair mm-hmm. uh man i <laughs> this piece is just uh, there's so many good things to talk about i do i do love the the whole colors the the red especially um because it's these little accents we've talked about it before in uh oh god who who was it um the guy who did derpy and Caratops journey uh Zy- Zyamo 5. Zyamo 5. yes yeah yes. he he does something similar where he'll put like a red flag or something it's just an interesting dab of color very like saturated bright color and this artist did the exact same thing where on Celestia's arm you get these these bright red patches in kind of a, a field of just whites and desaturated uh, right. things. Yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, it's just so good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. The texture is great as well. Mm-hmm. Like the 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 kind of um, I guess, you know, just just all over the piece. And it's not just it's not just the texture of the paper. Which you know sometimes you you get kind of like this 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 free advantage when you're using paper hmm. of having it being uh, kind of naturally textured so you can just color over it and it gives it that kind of texture is it's what people imitate a lot in digital art when they put a texture over the piece people like uh, a trill do that a lot hmm. um, it makes it seem less cartoony uh, or less or more realistic I guess you could say hmm. um, less perfect because digital art often is too perfect uh, in, in its uh, kind of lines and, and things like that. And, and so you've got that, but at the same time, like you can tell that it's not just that. You know, the the artist didn't just run a pencil over the texture and get that as well. You know, there's just very subtle things like, you know, like the underneath her chin, like the the dark darkness that's just very subtle right underneath her chin, and then it fades out quickly to be a, another layer of shadow. You know, and, and uh, you know, like the the top of her eyes, kind of how that gives that depth because you've got this faded kind of gradient uh that that kind of seems like the eyes are set back you know like eyes are set back in people Mm -hmm. um so there's there's this natural texture that comes from the paper but the artist also uses that and and there's so much little subtle detail all over these textured spots Mm -hmm. that that is more than just going over it in like a pencil Mm -hmm. i i think that this artist has kind of portrayed one of the cutest uh anthro faces that i've I seen was, yeah i was gonna bring that up uh, the way that she does her faces is very cute mm-hmm. it's kind of like well it's it's also very anthro right? it is very anthro. yeah well it's, it's like it's you know. go, go ahead joel it's like a short <laughs> slightly squishy face with giant eyes mm-hmm. 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 yeah and i think i think it's tough a lot of the times to, to kind of get that face right and i wouldn't be able to tell you what is right or wrong when it comes to these anthro faces but something that i do notice in in a lot of her pieces is that her she she doesn't have human mouth and nose she has that snout mm-hmm. however it's not pronounced at all it's very small mm-hmm. it's almost unnoticeable but yeah. it's still there yeah yeah it's like uh it, it's it's almost humanized but there are pony features in it so yeah uh, yeah, I think uh. <laughs> I, I think oftentimes when we look at a piece like this and and you look at something that kind of bridges that gap between the fictional and the reality, you know, when something is this kind of realistic, it's hard to describe what gets you there. Hmm. And I think that if there's anything in art that I would have trouble actually coming up with a physical representation of of like a reason why it would be there it would be that 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 bridge between reality and 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 digital hmm. because a piece like this that kind of sits right in between the two obviously it's sorry it's not digital but you know what i mean mm-hmm. fictional um you know this piece that sits right in the middle of the two is so hard to describe why it plays the part so well 
you know you can describe things like color and 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 value and shading to to artists to help them improve but if someone was to ask me like how can i make my piece more realistic something like this i would have no idea <laughs> yeah. it's so far over my head well it's like like you were saying with the shading earlier and i'm like struggling to to actually see some of the different shadings that are used because it just it looks so natural that you don't really pick out certain things it like it just looks right to your eye and it's mm -hmm. like it's tough to kind of focus on things because your eye automatically assumes that it's correct and it's yeah. like hmm <laughs> yeah, it's true uh one last thing because i think we're running up on time that i really like about this piece is uh her signature is actually included in the tattoos on celestia's arm and it's so subtle and it fits so well with the piece and i thought that you would like that rainbow plasma we yeah did. yeah it's it's great we didn't talk about the tattoo like at all well, you, I mean, it's, a, it's a tattoo <laughs> yeah but it's, it's interesting because it's got hercule mark it's got twilight involved in there and there's luna in there mm -hmm. as well or nightmare moon yeah yeah uh do you want to talk a little bit about it and i'll i'll jump in and solo max well, honestly it's uh, it's an interesting thing if she would have done it probably while she was you know doing the initial sketching because it's done in fine liner hmm. right with little bits of highlight but it it's he i don't know what i'm trying to figure out what the, what it means she's got the Dear Princess Celestia, dear Princess Celestia, letter there burning. You got Twilight's cutie mark. You got Twilight down the bottom of the tattoo on the right. Hmm. There's a skull on a on an axe. <laughs> yeah, I th I think uh, as with some some tattoos that are that are um, done, it sometimes it's just you know it it's specific to that particular author. So perhaps you know uh, Eucalilia has some sort of meaning behind why these tattoos would happen. Um, or it could just be that they look cool, I guess. Or Celestia just has a really dark uh, past, you know? And yeah, really. <laughs> there's yeah. a... It looks like there's a there's a pony, like a really simple pony. Yeah, it's Twilight. Tattoo. Yeah. Oh, it is Twilight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think... <laughs> yeah, it, it looks very much like Twilight, but <laughs> so it's kind of a stretch to be like, that's definitely it. Well, that's <laughs> pretty much <laughs> the tattoo, so... Yeah, yeah, not, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, going back to what you're saying about the signature, uh, there's actually two signatures. Mm -hmm. There's her, there's her kind of deviant art signature uh, underneath the dear Prince Celestia, and then she's also got like a, like a professional signature down in the tattoo leaf part. Yeah, uh, Ketrin 2014. So there's also that. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really have uh much else to to say about the piece uh, other than the fact that. Uh, the artist put like nothing in the background, and <laughs> because she knew your eye would not go there. Yeah, your eye doesn't true. need to go there. <laughs> it's true. Your, it your eye goes elsewhere. It doesn't. Um, so, one yeah. final thing to close this out is the whole iridescence of the hair and the eyes just matches so well. I can't get enough of it. Ah. <laughs> this piece is just so well done. On honestly, I would say we've been doing this for 119 episodes, and I, I would honestly say that this is one of the best pieces that we featured. Hmm. Like I like I I think it's I think it's spectacular. Hmm. So, yeah, pretty yeah. good. Yep, yeah, that that's that's basically it. Hmm. Uh, I wanted to feature this piece. You guys were going to feature it last week, and you texted me about it. Thank you for texting me about it because I wanted to talk about it. Yeah, well, I, I think it was burned actually. He was. I was like, I really want to feature this piece, but I know uh, Max uh, said he wanted to talk about it, and Burn was like, Yeah, you should probably text him and see if like you guys should do that next week. And I was like. Uh, all right. <laughs> and it's a good thing I did because yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, yeah, I, I love it. I, I think it's like I said. I think it's one of the best ones we featured. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for our art. We got to talk a little bit longer for each art piece today, which is nice uh, because we were missing Mister Burned. Um, but yeah, I guess we can move on to the questions. Questions. Now. Questions. And what kind of book would your OC appear in first? Story, art, dictionary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Set in my assassin monkey. Hmm. I always find these questions weird. We get asked questions about our OCs a lot. Hmm. Um, and I always feel weird about it because, like, I mean, mine, was, mine wasn't originally, like, meant to be, like, what we would call a pony sona, which is, like, you know, a representation of yourself, but in, you know, in a character. It wasn't originally meant to be like that, but because we did this show and I had to have something to represent me, it kind of has turned into it. So it's weird for me to be like, what would your OC do? It's like, oh, I don't know. What would I do? <laughs> <laughs> you would free you know? stuff and burn stuff, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
I, I guess I guess in my mind it kind of translates to like what kind of book would you appear in first? Mm. So, well, I would I would yeah. appear in a um, one of those something for dummies books. <laughs> um, Ele- on. Electricity work for dummies. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Electricity for mm. dummies, and I'd be like one of those photos <laughs> of the "Do not do this" photo. <laughs> Are you reaching out towards like an electric fence or something. Yeah. yeah. Li- Can li- guarantee wires. that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not surprised mm. that you can guarantee that? Uh, did, did you become a did you become no. a battered corn after that? <laughs> no. All right, Ted. How about you? I can't think of anything, so you're gonna have to go first. All right. Well, first of all, I could see your OC also being in something like that because your OC is like lightning. Yeah. So yeah, electricity and stuff. Um, mm, me, I could see being in some sort of like how to guide for uh something computer related, probably. Okay. Uh, but how to computer? How to computer? Yeah, <laughs> my OC would probably be in some sort of art book because that's what her cutie mark is. Mm. Yeah. So. Yes. I think I think I'd, I think I'd probably want to. I think I'd see myself in in I don't know some sort of like Heroes Quest book. I I I really enjoy. I sorry for people who don't know, Heroes Quest is like your standard like adventure like mm-hmm. you know that kind of trope. Um, like it's it's a uh, it's something that's always like intrigued me, and I like to think of myself as like the hero in a story. So, uh, yeah, I'd, pr- I'd probably do that, like an adventure book or, or something like that. Yeah, that'd be cool, dude. An adventure book where you and your OC team up and like go and freeze and burn stuff, fight crime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Hmm. All right. How about the next question? All right. So next question is: You suddenly find yourself the head of your own country. What is the name and some of the laws? By Blue Moon, nineteen ninety six. Hmm. <laughs> Our politics comes out now. <laughs> mm. Hmm. This one's tough because it's like, you know, you're the head of your own country. So, like, basically a country forms where you are. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you've got to set down the laws. But, like, you can't set down the laws without someone to enforce the laws. Because... Well, unless your law, your only law is that there are no laws. Nah, that's too true. <laughs> <laughs> what if you are the police force? Say... Your room is now your own country, and all the plushies are your subjects. So what you're Ooh. saying is, I am the law. <laughs> yes, you that are the law. Here, yeah, yeah, I'm the lur. The lur. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, this requires creative thinking, and I'm so not in a creative thinking mood. No, me either. Because I'm getting, I'm getting sick. So it's like, my brain is just so. I will go. I will name my country Tedtopia. Um. And uh, the only laws are that uh, uh, you have to give me plushies. Okay. Of ponies. Some sort of like uh, some sort of like offering to the yeah, king. Yeah, a tribute to to me. Okay, so uh, that's strange. <laughs> um, yeah. Blood sacrifices. <laughs> Blood or fluff sacrifices. <laughs> Stuffing sacrifices. Yeah. Jeez. Okay, I'm gonna. I, I okay. I I know what I'm gonna call mine. Okay. I know what I'm, I don't know what the laws are, but I know what I'm gonna call mine. Hmm. Uh, mine's gonna be our paradise, for RP our paradise. Again. Uh, 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 okay, fine. It sucked. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. The law is that none of you are allowed to enter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have it all to myself. It's gonna be on an island, and it's gonna be just me sitting there, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a great time. And everybody else is forced to sit on the other island, looking at me having a great time. <laughs> there, fair enough. That's it. Um, I will call my country Frank, and there shall be no laws, not even gravity. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> wow. I like, I like the whole like s- twist where you can change physics and stuff. Yeah, I wasn't That's aware good. that countries were allowed to opt out of gravity. It's, it's a law, dude. America opts out of science, like. <laughs> <laughs> America opts out on a lot of things. Yeah. In my country, there is no such thing. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that is that how you guys can do the whole upside down thing? Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, everything makes sense now. Mm. Everything. But wait, did I just let our secret? I think I just let our secret out. <laughs> That's why the spiders are so big. Because of gravity. Because of my <laughs> gravity. Yeah. 
That actually makes a lot of sense. No, 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 no. I'm not going to let you get away with that. No, Go no, no. On. No, this, this totally works. That, that's, why, that's why bugs in the ocean are so big, because there's lower gravity. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Well, that's how... Because, because that's it's... Because it's... De- that, that, <laughs> <'cause> it's <laughs> what? That's because how the, in, the, the, in the water, you're not as affected by... Like, what? Yeah. The reason why the bu- bugs float- in the ocean <laughs> are bigger because low gravity. Hey, the largest mammal is the blue whale, and it's in the ocean. The reason why so. stuff gets so big in the ocean is because they don't have to support themselves as much. That's why the bugs that crawl on the ocean's floor. Okay, but how does that change the constant of gravity? There That's- was also uh, a book written by C.S. Lewis where the, like extraterrestrial life on mars was gigantic because of the lower gravity yeah it, granted it was science fiction but you know no really it wasn't non-fiction <laughs> yeah i'm shocked <laughs> <laughs> well um i mean i can't prove that that's wrong but i'm pretty sure it's wrong hey, have you ever been into the ocean and floated and i'm fairly certain that bugs in the ocean aren't bigger because of low gravity have you hey, floated um, in the ocean have I floated in the ocean? Actually, I have. Well, there yeah, you go. There was no gravity in the ocean. <laughs> there there is. no gravity in the ocean. <laughs> it's just... It's, you what? Know. Okay. I I don't even know how to process that. Like I said, I'm getting sick, so I can't even process that. So, that just, so you just blew you, my mind. Do you yeah. just kind of like float around while you record? Then? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I have to tie myself to my chest sometimes. space station. <laughs> Uh, are are you a bug in the ocean? Is that what it is? <laughs> is Australia actually Atlantis? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's coming together. Man, you're just letting out all of the secrets today. That's why our spiders are so big. <laughs> because they're in the ocean. Yeah. There's no gravity. Are that does that make them water spiders or uh <laughs> What? Uh Okay. So wait well, so wait I, I think we can sufficiently call that uh question answered. So Australia being a desert is is completely false, right? That's just made up. Like it, a, a, the the definition of a desert is somewhere where it doesn't rain. It doesn't rain under the ocean. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's right. It's technically, <sighs> it doesn't rain under the ocean. Um. Wow. Wow. I think we've all learned a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. And probably unlearned a lot more. <laughs> Wow. All right. Well, I mean, that, like I said, that I think that question has been sufficiently answered. I think you guys are making fun of me. No. 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 I'm just like... We're just making fun of things you've said. <laughs> wait, wait, oh, wait. Oh, shush. Max, shush. watch. Like, we, we go and visit him in Australia, and it actually is, like, you know, underwater and... Yeah, I know. Oh my god, it's like uh, Atlanta... Or it's like... Uh, Atlanta? Atla- it's, Atlanta, it's like Atlanta. In, yeah, in that Futurama episode. <laughs> the lost city of Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you just messed up your words there. No. All right. All right. Question's over. <sighs> Done here. No. But I think it's so I think bad. I can feel my brain leaking out my nose. <laughs> that might just be my cold, though. Hmm. Um, Love so, you all the same. See you uh, next I week. Guess, <laughs> I guess. Well, no. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, do plugs, man. Do yeah. the plug, man. Do the plugs, man. Okay. Before we do the plugs, though. Okay. Really? What do you? What? Uh, next week we might have something special planned. What? Why was that before the plugs? Because I felt like doing it before Since the plugs. Since when did it ever come before the plugs? <laughs> I don't know. I think your brain is leaked at your ears. Yeah, probably. Rod, I'm, I'm sorry, did I break you too? Yeah. Oh, you did. You really did. I can't even speak. I said. I just said out of orders. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't uh, know what to do with my hands. I hope that system hands, is out man. of orders. I'm so, I'm so out of it right now. <laughs> Dude. It's too hot in my room. I'm sweating. It's uncomfortable. I'm scared about bugs in the ocean having no gravity. <laughs> I think you're hyperventilating or something. I think I'm going a bit crazy. Yeah. So well. somebody else, somebody else take it from here, Okay, please. so next week we might actually do a themed episode after, you know, several weeks of non-themed episodes because it's close to Halloween. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not even Halloween. It's just kind of close, I guess. Yeah. It's it's going to be, like, what, two two or three days away from Halloween is when our episode will air. Yeah, it's the 28th. Yeah. So, if, four days away from Halloween. Then whatever. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, the thing is, is we're going to try and do some Halloween-themed art. It's still probably going to be of our choice, but it will be spooky slash Halloween. Scary skeletons. Slash, yeah. I'm totally going to call it Halloweenies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, yeah. So I guess we're doing that next week. Now, can we get to the thing that I asked the, about the, before the 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 thing where we mentioned the the other things? Dude, yeah, just the, uh... the bugs in the ocean. <laughs> okay, um, okay. So I'll do the bugs, uh, plugs. Um, 
we have a DeviantArt page which is kyokusaders.deviantart.com with a whole bunch of fun interactive things on there. So go there. We have a YouTube page which is youtube.com slash Crusaders, I think. Uh, Facebook which is Crusaders. We have a Twitter which is at Crusade. We have a Tumblr which is kyokusaders.tumblr.com and an email account which is kyokusaders at gmail.com. Bam! Got Go it. subscribe to our YouTube if you want to keep watching these because after next week they will no longer be on EFN's YouTube channel. Correct. So, so it'll be this episode and the next. <coughs> so it'll be this episode <laughs> and the next episode. Yes. As provided I don't die. Mm. Um, uh, that'll be on EFN, and then after that, um, yeah, yeah, we won't we won't have any more on there. So head over to your YouTube page and subscribe if you haven't already. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, that's everything. Uh, I can feel myself slowly dying here. My voice is going because we've been talking for an hour. Um, so that's it for this episode. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, I know I did. Um, we already talked about what we're going to do next week, so I'm all out of sorts. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I guess that's everything. There's nothing else to say. Do we you guys have anything to say? No, we the same. <laughs> do you guys have anything else to say? We love you all the same. Literally. Love all the same. <sighs> I, I I hate you. I hate you both. I hate you both. When's Wait. Burn coming back? <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, <laughs> whether or not you're on the live stream. Or on YouTube. We love you all the we same. <laughs> My name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm Flutterguy317. I'm Apple Spark. And we'll see you guys next week. Watch out for them bugs. Bye. Bye.